Okay. <sighs> Just walked in the door and from the three arena in Dublin from the Kingpin semifinals, myself, little camera boy Christian, just got back and there's only one question that needs to be asked. We're gonna answer it right now. Kingpin semifinals, what just happened? It's pretty simple. We just saw star making performances from the top of the card all the way down to the bottom. Now we're not gonna talk about every single fight in detail. I'm just gonna give you my key points and we're still doing breakdowns on all the fights that I wanna cover at a later date. But I did wanna get on camera and just give the raw emotions of what I'm feeling right now because right now I'm in the moment, right? And I just wanna live in it by taking you guys through what I saw. First off, we gotta talk about it. The titty controversy. Christian, have you ever seen anything like that? Never, right? Never in my life could I have imagined. <laughs> and I know that someone got the freaking clip of me on the live stream doing this number. It wasn't because I was trying to get a peek, guys. No, I don't wanna hear none of that, all right? It was because I was so shocked and surprised and scared. I wish I had my coat because I would've thrown them over those things. They were floating like buoys in the ocean out here, but I would've tried. I honestly don't know how that's gonna go over with the heads of, you know, DAZN and, and Kingpin. Of course, it created a viral moment that everyone's gonna remember and apparently, Saw some people saying Donovan Steele made his return. But yeah, that was not good. I understand Daniela was overcome with emotion. I think everybody else was at home overcome with something else. But um, she got her win, fair play. But let's talk about the fights that quite frankly matter. The Kingpin Finals. On the women's side, we had Barbie doing her fang thing once again, piecing up left and right. We knew that Emily was gonna come into this fight and it was not gonna be an easy bout. Barbie just showed her the door and then walked her through it. Now, the interesting part about that is while Barbie moves on to the finals and Emily moves into the loser's bracket on the other side, Julie Polka became a superstar tonight, guys. I'm talking that crowd was there for Winderson, but Julie might have stolen because my Lord, the emotion that came over her face when she won, I could damn near, I wanted to cry for her. It was such a groundbreaking and moving moment and it was all because she beat Elle Brook. Elle Brook was the girl that we all thought, this is the finalist. And to be fair to Elle, she probably shouldn't have been in this tournament at that weight. And it's, it's of course, high in sight 2020, right? She signed up, it is what it is. But Elle Brook probably should be fighting at 115 pounds. So God, I love the girl, I do. I know Elle personally and I think she's such a sweetheart. It was tough to see her lose, if I'm honest, and I try to be as unbiased as possible. It was tough to watch because I know how much she wanted it. She was talking about going pro. There's gonna have to be some things changed in her style because it was so one way. It was just, just forward pressure, and that's just not enough at this level, and especially not at the pro level. So there's some stuff there for Elle to work on, but funny enough, we, we were sitting around thinking we might get an all Brook finals. Now we do get an all Brook fight in the loser's bracket for that third place medal. I don't know if they're gonna do it. I'd be shocked, honestly, at this point if they both said yes, but maybe we actually get both Brooks sisters in the ring together for that third place finish. But the finals, Julie Polka with the nation behind her and Barbie with, I'm pretty sure, the entire world of goth behind her. It, it baffles me that she's able to fight in that makeup and still put on the performance that she has. First thoughts immediately, you go to Barbie's range. Again, the thing that has separated her fight after fight after fight. But on the other side, Julie Polka put down L in that first round. And while it maybe not would have counted, she was putting power in that left hand. Boom. She's not going to get away with being so one dimensional. I'll tell you that now. But that one is, it's a toss up. I, I don't have any idea. But then we move over to the men's side. And before we even get into the tournament, Kiefer Crosby, showing out for the Irish people, said, give me Tommy Fury. You wanna fight MMA fighters? You wanna fight these influences? Come and fight me. After dropping Aaron Chalmers, massive performance from him, calls out Tommy Fury, to be honest. If it would get Tommy out of our scene, please feed him to Kiefer Crosby, please. But all that aside, we had 
our Kingpin men's semifinals. Let's start with Jarvis and Gibb. A fight that I, coming into, thought, listen, this is not gonna be an easy fight for Gibb. Jarvis, we watched him. Me and Christian went to Vegas and we watched him spar, and now that it's over, we can talk about it. One of the things that concerned me about Jarvis sparring was that he did not get his head off of the center line. And even in the Mayweather gym, Gibb was <clears throat> touching on some, you guys can hear my voice, I apologize. Gibb was, one second, sparkling pineapple. <sighs> An Oiris Deloitte. He was hitting on some points when he said, Jarvis, it didn't matter that you're in the Mayweather gym if all you're doing is getting teed off on in the gym. And that isn't necessarily true, but in some ways it is. Jarvis, in those spars I watched, there weren't the adjustments to being hit. He was walking through punches that with headgear on and 14 to 16 to 18s, aren't going to affect him. Tonight it did. And while Gibb didn't knock him down or knock him out, he did what he said he was going to do. Break him. Push him to a point where Jarvis was not able to keep that same pace, keep that same energy, and continue to move forward. It was like in the fifth round, it was the first round for Gibb. He was swimming. Jarvis was sinking. And at some point in that fight, I looked and my co-commentator, Malcolm, who's a legend, by the way, Malcolm Martin, and I said, it just feels like methodically Gibb is pulling people under and drowning them in a riptide. And that's the best way I can describe it. There's nothing flashy from Gibb, but it's just consistency and variety. The up and down, the level change, to be able to bang, bang, and then look, body, body, head, body, head, upstairs. It was just, it was a massive performance from Gibb. And we'll talk about a star-making performance from Kenny, but this was a reminder from Gibb. Allow him to reintroduce himself. In case you all forgot, the big Gibber is still one of the most formidable fighters in influencer boxing. Then, we had the main event. It sounded like the goddamn roof was gonna come off the place. It sounded like we were in an earthquake when Wenderson Nunez walked out in if this was a movie, Christian, I know you like to direct a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Get your, get your director on, I know you make the music. If you were writing a script for this fight, King Kenny comes out first, trolls a little bit with the fans, fair play, has the Brazilian colors on, walks into the ring, but then here comes Winderson. Just like you'd wanna write it. The rapper, I'm not sure who it was, people in the comments let me know, just absolutely had the crowd in the palm of his hand, just people going louder than I've ever heard it. As he makes his way to the ring, the script would have said, Winterson Nunez overcomes the long reach of Kenny, overcomes the consistency of jabs in his face and finds a way to outlast his opponent. He wins in front of his people and goes to the finals. The only problem is, if you're handing out scripts, King Kenny didn't get one. King Kenny said, oh, I, I'm not coming to acting class today. In fact, I'm just gonna improv a little bit because he walked out first, stayed there, warmed up with Daly in the corner and took all of the air out of that Brazilian crowd. As soon as the first round started, boom, on the jab, bang, bang, head movement off the jab as well. And then I saw what I didn't know King Kenny had, confidence on another level. This was a man that wasn't deterred by the thousands of people in that arena from all the people in Brazil, from all the things he'd heard about Kenny. You're just, you're just not ready for this main event level yet. Yeah, you, you've gotten better, but you're just not ready for this. Boy, was he ever. Again, from round one, it was domination. And here comes round two, after Kenny is styling on Winterson, laying on the ropes. Yeah, come on, come on, papi, come on, little boy pequeño, doing all of that. Round two, it wasn't just style, it wasn't just flash, it was foot on the pedal, it was power, it was substance, because King Kenny then lined up a left hook, bang, and Winterson Nunes crumbles to the ground. Like I said, Kenny didn't get the script, because the next three rounds were just like that. Footwork. I mean, at one point he got up, Christian, move the camera for me because he got up and started Ric Flair jiving and then, whoa, pointing at him too, giving him one of these and then pop up underneath, boom. And then one point just started walking in place. James Brown, it looked, honestly, it reminded me, and Malcolm especially, 
of a mix between like a Sugar Ray Leonard where he was shoe shot and then coming upstairs and then like a, like a, like a Eubank Sr. where he was just able to just loosey goosey flopping his arms out and then boom underneath jutting the chin forward pulling back right hands maybe I'm a prisoner of the moment and we all tend to be but this is one of the greatest performances in influencer boxing history and you could argue the greatest King Kenny just put himself into a higher echelon than I ever thought he could he has now stamped himself in a league above what we just thought he was two fights ago but the job's not done because now King Kenny takes on an Isan Gibb in the finals. Apparently we're getting an announcement. I don't know when that's gonna be, but I'm hearing the finals are gonna be announced in the next couple of days. And all I'll say is if you liked a little bit of this semifinal, my voice is gone because quite frankly, there was not there much to begin with. And it wasn't because I'm sick and we're traveling, it's because I could not wait for this card. But if you can't wait just like I can't, stay tuned. The Kingpin Finals are coming. King Kenny and Isan get Barbie and Julie Polka. The stories you guys wanted in a tournament format are about to pay off. Remember where we were just a couple of weeks ago and then remember where you are in the finals. The story is coming to an end. We're on the last chapter. What happens next? I don't have those answers, but for now, it's time for me and the little camera boy Christian to take a break. So, the next couple days, you might see us, you might not, but I guess we'll find out. <coughs> Cut that part, Christian. <laughs>